This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Uh, okay. But but is that okay? <laughs> um, we got okay. another answer. We'll lock it down and come back at you at the next meeting. <laughs> okay. Line uh, line item fifty nine fifty for the transfer out on the USDA grants. Um, yes, ma'am. There's there's nothing there. Sorry. It, can you explain to me what that is quickly? Yes, ma'am. Last year we got um, they had a USDA grant for some body cameras for the police department. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was approved by the council that a portion of those body cameras be paid for from the alcohol control fund. So mm -hmm. we opened up a USDA grant fund that will be used in the event that we have a grant. It's got $10 sitting in it right now, and it'll only be budgeted if we have a project to budget out of it. So okay. it's specific to certain expenses. So that's why right now it's just at zero. Now, if we were to get a USDA grant and mm -hmm. this fund was to be used again to supplement a portion of that, then that number would, you know, it would have money there. But that's mm -hmm. why it was specific to one purchase. Okay. And so on um, 5202, that's that's the same. Uh, 50, it went from 15,000 to 5,000. So yes, does that mean they, they don't need that much? <laughs> no, ma'am. Every year they'll kind of set their amount based on what their need is and in going mm -hmm. over all of these budgets we got with either the chief the commission member we had you know all the minutes from the meetings and they mm -hmm. pretty well set what they want to spend that you know what they're proposing to spend this money on so gotcha okay all right that's okay. all okay thanks all right you're very welcome All right, the next one is the Arkansas Local Police and Firemen's Pension Budget. And this is um, the fire retirement. And we uh, pay for the fire department employer part of lot fee out of this fund. So that is what this fund is. There's an 8.5% employee part that is deposited into this fund out of every payroll for the fire department. Um, last year, the general fund had to supplement this fund about $5,000 um, because it didn't get enough money from the, uh, Patty, are you on? Is Patty on here? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I was muted. Okay, if I get to telling this wrong, because you deal with this a whole lot more than I do, if I get to telling this wrong, just jump in, okay? Okay. Uh, around June, July, or August of every year, there's a credit. It's on the lot fee report, and that's kind of a turn back amount of money that is set, and it's different every year. And it goes as a credit against the employer portion of what we pay for lot fee retirement for our firemen. That number varies. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. We're thinking that this year, because we get the ad valorem tax now in lot fee, we don't have fireman's pension anymore, it comes into lot fee. With that and the credit that we should get from that money, that general is not gonna have to supplement this fund. Once we get to that point and watch it go, when Patty gets a report, she'll compare what's on her report to what we budgeted. If it's not enough, we might have to come back later, you know, and budget some money to help cover it. But right now we think we're not going to have to. So that's what, that's all this fund is, is fire department retirement. Employer portion gets put in there. I mean, the employee portion gets put in there, the ad valorem tax and that credit that goes on that report helps cover the employer part. and then it's paid out to the appropriate agency. Any questions? Okay. Anything, Patty, you wanna add? Um, no, um, our percentages did not increase. So, I mean, that's the only thing I think that you left out, but everything else was spot on. Okay. All righty. 
Okay, the next one we have is district court court automation fund. Money comes straight from district court. Um, the, ju the judge and the chief clerk at district court set this budget and when they brought me the information, they said they wanted to leave everything the same except for the 5502 number, which is maintenance of equipment and vehicles. And we put a little note down here at the bottom that that includes the iron tech security to protect computers and systems from spyware and hacking. So they added that expense and increased that to, to cover that. Other than that, everything else they, uh, they wanted to leave the same. How often would, well, if you know, is that is that an expense that I have to incur do every year, or is that just a one time as needed? Let me see. I, let me see. I printed it off. Um, it's monthly. It's a monthly expense. My, okay. Yeah. And I've got a report right here, and it ranges anywhere from. It looks like it's settled in to around eleven hundred twenty-four dollars a month. Okay. Um, now this also too, sometimes when they have computer issues, they can use this, this money is set with what they can use it on, but they can use it to fix just normal computer issues. So a portion of that would be used for regular stuff that would go wrong with their computer. Okay. It looks okay. like that bill will be around $1,124 a month. Okay. Vicki, is that a shared expense with the county? Not this one. Not this, Not this one. one. This, is specific, mm -mm, mm -mm, this is specific funding that, okay. that they get. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Right. Okay, the next one is Fire Protection Service Program. You'll sometimes hear the fire department talk about Act 833 money. It's a turn back money that they get from the state. This is the same stuff as the Act 833. Um, this budget is gone over with uh, Fire Chief Eric Chisholm. And in this budget, he, on his PPE, he is gonna buy turnouts. They take their turnouts and they're in a rotation. Every few years, they're li they have a life expectancy. So he has kind of gotten this money in that rotation of um, replacing those turnouts, basically when their life, you know, when, when they're done. Any questions about this one? All right, Monticello Water Reservoir. We're going to start down at the bottom left hand corner in the notes down here. Um, that first that section first where it says County of Timber at Lake Monticello, that through December the 1st of 20, that is what we have collected and proceeds from cutting the timber. And then that's the 10% management fee that we paid to Kingwood Forestry through 12 1 of 20. The second part of that was in that project, when we cut that timber, there's a road construction that's a part of that contract. The total cost of that road was $90,000. And I believe it said in that verbiage that if it was to go over $90,000, it had to go back before the council, if it went over that amount. Pay to date through 12 1 of 20 for that road was 42509.53. So that leaves a balance of $48,000 to go in the 2021 budget. So that's what you see up there in the proposed 2021 besides 5801 outlay of structures and property is the balance of that road. The next part where it says Lake Monticello levy repair 2021 budget, the engineering on that should be around $21,182, which is 10% of the repair cost. 
and the bid came in for the repair at 211,820. So that's what you see up there under um, contracting engineers. And I'll tell you in a minute what makes up that other difference on that. But um, part of that 24-7 up there in 5405 is that 21182. And then the repair cost is in that 5601 maintenance of building and structure. So that's the repair that you just approved for the levy. Then there's some anticipated timber sales coming in for 2021. Uh, around, we, Paige and I both, well Paige did, she communicated with John McAlpine when we were talking about what to put in here for anticipated sales. So it's anticipated to be $35,000 in some additional revenue which would be a 10% Kingwood Forestry Management fee of $3,500. So that's added in up there under that 5405 contract and engineers. And um, then I put a note on here. At December the 30th, the checking account balance in Water Reservoir was 267,000 and some odd dollars. Running this budget down, with your other sales and services under your general revenue at the top, running down the expenses, it's gonna use $261,320 of that $267,000 to, to make it work for next year. So I put a note down there that if for some reason the project, the repair project happens before the timber sales, that we might have to make an allocation from one cent sales tax to help cover the cost of the repair. And Paige and I were talking today, um, in some of those emails, there was um, some discussion from Mr. McAlpine about possible road, another road construction. But Paige, wasn't it like around $8,000 or? I don't remember, it, it, it wasn't a whole lot, if I remember correctly, if they were gonna to have to do some type of access. Yeah. Um, but we could revisit that when we got to that point. But I did wanna put that note down there that there could have to be some money allocated from one cent sales tax, depending on the timeline. Um, there are some other expenses that also may be incurred, like riprap for the levy was not in the bid. Okay, and we chose not to put it in there because we saved as much riprap as we could, and then we also have a bunch at the transfer station. So we're gonna try to spend as little as possible on that, um, but it has to have riprap. So there will be that additional expense, and um, we are uh, wanting to fix the swimming area so that there's no longer a drop-off. Um, we have our firemen um, think that that's why that child drowned at the lake a few years ago. So we want to try to make that swimming area better and more safe. And we don't know what those expenses would be either. Right. So that's why we put that down there in, in the corner. I got a question on, on future cuttings. It says, uh anticipated sales of thirty five thousand mm -hmm. what would, who would determine what would it trigger whether we cut that timber we're planning on cutting is the timber. that an as needed basis or or what we're we're going to cut the timber we just don't know what the price is going to be i mean we have exactly. a contract for the price of timber but we had one before we ever started cutting and at some point um john had to come back and say hey we we can't do this the logger anymore we, we've got to change the price so the prices are prices are down so I'd, I'd recommend not cutting until we absolutely need it so well I, the decision's been made okay so it's about at this point it's about whether or not um they can get in there and if they can't get in there because it's too wet then they will hold off and okay. maybe prices will be back up okay
Any other questions? Vicky. Okay. Yes, sir. Th this is Craig. I'm in now. Would you bring me up to date on where we're at in the agenda? Yes, we're on the Monticello Water Reservoir budget. Thank you. You're very welcome. And at the end, Craig, if you want to review over anything or call me or whatever, I'll be glad to go over the rest of them with you. So, Thank you, Vicki. I'll probably call you in the morning. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Okay. All right, the next one is Municipal Airport Improvement Project. We're gonna start again at the bottom left-hand corner. There are two projects going on out there that are kind of lumped into one. We have a re an apron rehab overlay project and we have a runway rehab overlay project. The apron rehab project is a state grant project the total cost of that project is $170,144.30. It'll be a state grant of $150,000, and you'll see the city share is $20,144.30. And then we have it broken down for that total cost, what, how much of it's engineering and how much of it is construction. The runway rehab overlay project total cost is one point. I'm just gonna say 1.4 million, basically. Um, you see a federal grant of 1.2 and some change. It's a 90% federal grant, 10% state grant. And you see the breakdown there. You'll see over there, the engineering for that project, the two costs that, that make up that, how much the ad was, and then the construction. Now, under the bottom part, we broke down what we had paid because this project started in 19. It'll be a 19 and a 20 and a 21 project. So we broke down what we had paid in 19 and 20. And you'll see broken down there for the ads, for the engineering, for the construction, and broken down by FAA, which is federal, and then the state. And then I put a little note there, what we had received in the federal in federal grants so far. So what you'll see budgeted up here in it is the balance of those projects. You'll see for 2021 that we have a state grant coming in for the, and I broke it down by project. For the apron rehab overlay, it'll be $150,000. For the- uh, Okay, I'm um, in. Okay, hi. Okay. We're on Municipal Airport Improvement Project budget, Ms. Claudia. Um, under the state grant, the 4510 number, you'll see the 10% of that total cost of that project. And then the federal grant amount is the balance between what we've already received and the, and the total of what we would receive. And then the engineering is the balance that is due for both projects. And then the construction is the balance due for both projects. And on 11-23 of 20, Airport Commission Chairman Benny Robert the third approved this budget. Any questions about this? And if you have any questions later between now and the next meeting, just call me or, or you know, you can ask them at that meeting, however you want to do it, but just let me know. Okay. The next one is property cleanup condemnation. You'll see what we have projected to bring in for revenue. We have $500 in legals. And then there's an approximate 
$500,000 or $5,000 in property actual expenses for the cleanup of the property. Uh, so what's the source of that revenue? Well, there was, we made an allocation, was it a $10,000 allocation in 19 or 20? Yes. And it was one of those two. We put $10,000 in there and then, now Paige, correct me if I'm not telling this right, but I believe the city crew has been doing a lot of the cleanups um and they still have i printed off a minute ago all the balances because i figured you might want to know how much was in that account um they have enough money to operate they have eight thousand one hundred seventeen dollars and ten cents in that account in their checking account because we have received some money in that people owed this year for um, some cleanups. So it's it's sustaining itself at okay. this point. The judgments that we get against uh, claim, right. you know, helps fill it back up. Okay. Right. And I did go over this one with uh, Brian Rogers. This budget, okay. I just lost the budget somewhere in here on uh, November 18th. Any questions? Okay. All right, the next one, Street Improvement Project. Now, this is the one that I got with Ashley and I and Paige got together today and came up with an idea to change street improvement. I want you to go to your notes, if you would, please. Um, and we're gonna talk about the sidewalk project. All right, the sidewalk project phase one, which was approved October 29th of 19, and I put the description, it's east side of 425 from 278 to Old Warren Road. The total project cost is $233,000. Now, right here on this federal grant, that should be 150, not 50. And we'll correct that on the original copy. And so that leaves the city share of that project at $83,000. And I broke it down engineering and construction. Then, uh, and then under that one in 2019 and 2020, we've paid for all the engineering. It was approved at council meetings and we paid for all that engineering. So that $26,000 was paid for. Um, on sidewalk project phase two, the engineering only, because at the time that's all we had was to approve the engineering, was, May the, was approved May the 26th of 2020. And that project goes from the library to Jordan Park. The total cost incurred to date is the engineering, which is $25,110. And we've paid for all that engineering. We paid for that in 2020. Don't know anything yet about the construction cost of that project yet. Now, upon the proposed budget, that $207,000 is the construction of phase one. And then um, we're showing the grant at the top, the revenue coming in for $150,000, which shows that it would need to use $56,000 of the cash that's in street improvement to finish the project. Uh, phase one. Now, if you'll remember, in when we did the budget last year, we said that once we finished the sidewalk project, and, it, and at that time, we were talking about finishing sidewalk project one, that we would close out the street improvement project and put that money in one cent sales tax back in there where it originated from. But because we're in the middle of two different projects, went in and Paige and I visited, me and Ashley and Paige visited today. And I'm just gonna read this bottom section down here. So just 
look over the, this little note. As part of the 2020 street improvement fund budget, we said that uh, on completion of sidewalk project phase one, we would close out the street improvement fund checking account and transfer the remaining funds into 1998 one cent sales tax fund checking. As a result of approving engineering for phase two in 2020 and paying for engineering in 2020, we recommend paying for construction of both sidewalk projects from street improvement fund to remain consistent. Upon completion of both projects, we will determine how to move forward with the street improvement fund checking account. So we recommend that we just keep both of these projects in this fund. Once these projects are complete, then we can decide what to do with the balance of this money. There may be some other you know, something else you want to use it for and budget it out of here. If you want to put it back in one cent sales tax and budget it there, we can. Any questions or? Do we do we anticipate completing phase one and two in 2021? Uh -uh. Phase just, one only? Just phase one. Okay. Uh, I may get, we may get lucky, but I don't think so. Not with COVID and the way they award these grants. It's, okay, it's so Arkansas Department of Transportation grant, so. So we're going to let this fund then just carry over into 2022, and we'll maybe complete it then. Hopefully. That's what is, is that what Vicky's asking or saying? Yes. Okay. So keep everything. We went looking for it. Where did you spend it at? It would just make more sense. We think that it's all paid out of one fund. And you don't have part of each of these projects paid in two different places. Okay, thank you. And we've got them set up within the fund by project, so we can run reports for each one and pull it by the project and tell us what we, you know, what we spent, so we can keep it separate within the fund. Okay. And I, let's see. And this is for your information. Um, I can find it. The checking account balance in that fund is twelve thirty-one of twenty. Now there'd be a little bit of interest added to this after reconciling it. It's six hundred sixty-nine thousand one hundred ninety dollars and eighty-one cents. How much was that? Repeat that. Six hundred sixty-nine thousand one hundred ninety dollars and eighty-one cents. And you're going to use what did I have on there to use 200 and something of it? Uh, 56,000 of that would be used to complete phase one. So you'd still have, you know, get about a, a, a lot of money in there after finishing phase one. Any questions? Okay. The next one is the pre board fund. And that in that 2020 unallocated beginning cash balance, that is their cash balance and their budget, their budgeted expenses for 2021 will be determined by the tree board. And it would just be an out, we'd have to do a budget update, you know, and expend it as, as they wanted to expend it. But right now there's nothing planned to spend that money on. Okay. The next one is USDA grant fund. And Clarissa, this goes back to that alcohol uh, expenditure that we had. We opened this account with $10. We did that transaction, got that grant money. It went back to $10. We're going to leave the $10 in there just to keep the account open in case we get another grant. Okay. So this would just be determined based on a project. Okay. And this is only for USDA grants. Right. Just That's exactly right. Everybody. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. The last one we have is a warrant service fee fund, and we opened this one last year. 
Um, they're projecting to bring in $4,500 for 2021. This again is for use for the police department. And this will be determined um, in the year, what they spend this money on. At this present time, they didn't have anything specific that they wanted to spend it on. And that's it. That's all of them for tonight. All right. Have any recommendations, questions? I think you've done a good job. Thank you. It was a group effort. So we thought it would be the best thing would to be put these little notes down in the corner, synopsis of projects and stuff so that you can see if you find right. anything that doesn't make sense. Once you go in and, and look at it, just let me know. And like I said, some of this may change as we go during the year. We may have to allocate, you know, different money if we have to do anything in one cent sales tax to water reservoir, if there's some engineering that we missed or didn't account for, or if there's anything, we'll we'll take care of it at the time that we know, you know, that we know, but this is pretty much how these projects are breaking down with what we know now. Does everybody have the next meeting date? Four no. what, is, what is it? Thursday. That's what the 14th? I this Thursday? Uh huh. Is that a problem for anybody? What time There's is the no meeting? Ma'am? What time is the meeting? Um, the way it's 5 30. And this is kind of how we broke it down tentatively was to Thursday night meet on um, finalizing water and sewer, doing street, solid waste, and airport on Thursday. The water and sewer, streets, mm -hmm. and solid waste. Street, okay. solid waste, airport. Okay. Then we're looking at coming right behind that one either on Monday or Tuesday of next week and doing um, the general fund, which consists of police, fire, district court, and admin, cemetery, senior citizen center, park, and one cent sales tax. Repeat that again. Would you repeat that? I almost got all of them. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, general fund, which is district court, mm -hmm. police department, mm -hmm. fire department, mm -hmm. and administration. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the park commission fund. The oh, park commission, okay. Senior citizen center fund. Okay. Cemetery. <clears throat> Association fund and one cent sales tax. Okay. All, All right. right now that's email tomorrow morning. All right. The yeah, date we, we, we can forward that email that I sent you, Paige. We can forward that to them. All right. The dates we, for sure we're meeting Thursday, January the 14th at 5 30. Yes, ma'am. And, and then we do not know whether it's going to be Monday or Tuesday of next week. Yeah. Can I make a recommendation to it Tuesday? It's Monday's Martin Luther King Day. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Tuesday. And that still gives us Thursday of that week. That gives us Tuesday, Thursday of that week, and Monday of the following week, which would be the Monday before the council meeting to iron out. That last group is going to be the biggest, is, is going to be the most information. And it would give us three meetings. Okay. Thursday, Tuesday, call. and the next Monday. If we need it, right. Okay. Because we now, have an updated budget to do too. You know, in conjunction with doing 2021, we're going to have to be updating the 2020 budget also, which is okay. basically a formality, but, you know, there will be some things we do need to talk about. 
All right, when is the council meeting? What's the date of the council meeting? 26th. 26th. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, I, um, what time are are we meeting these, the, the other ones, um, Tuesday? Because I know I got an NAAC. That's going to be my first um, NAACP membership meeting on that Tuesday. Tuesday the 19th? Yes. Yes, after Martin Luther King Day. Meetings. Mm -hmm. Typically start at 5.30. Is okay. that a problem or can you do that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to adjust it. We generally meet at 7 o'clock and okay. then the executive committee meets before that, but I can I can arrange the executive committee meeting. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Oh, and okay. congratulations on your election or appointment. Or <laughs> it was an election, just unopposed. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 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 And let's try to get on a little bit earlier next or this Thursday so that we can iron out whatever kinks we end up with. We'll try to, we'll start it up at five. Okay. That'll give us an opportunity to iron out kinks before the last minute and maybe everybody can get on, on time then. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. For the most part, are y'all pretty well okay with these budgets that, that you know of without going and sitting down and looking at it? Uh, you know, if you have a question, just let me know, but are you pretty well okay with these? No, I took a look at it and I'm new and I could understand. I like the notes down there and I could follow the lines when whoever brought it to me. So I was familiar with it. I think it was good and clear. Okay, and if you know, get with me any time if you have any specific questions, you know, want to go through any of these processes. So. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's all we have. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Appreciate participating.